Hey, good morning, everyone. Well, I'm not gonna say good morning. I'd rather say good afternoon, good evening, good all hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> A warm Palm Springs welcome to Making Art Public. The last couple of episodes that I did, I forgot to introduce myself. So I want to introduce myself. I am Shonda, your Palm Springs Public Arts Commissioner. And I get so excited to talk to our artists. And um, if you have gotten a chance, I know you've been um, sheltering in place. I know you've been covering your space and keeping safe. But if you ever, and if you venture out and have an opportunity to walk down Town Town Palm Springs and see these fabulous, amazing benches that the Art Commission is, is helping to put up, you will stumble across this amazing, fun bench right in front of Tinderbox from the wonderful Patrick from Coachella Arts. Uh, he is here today to talk to us about his bench. Welcome, Patrick. Is it Sheehan? I forgot to ask you how to pronounce it, your last name. It, it, is, it is Sheehan or Sheehan. There was always a, 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 a feud between my parents. They pronounced it differently, but however you want to say it. Ah! Thank you. Thank you for having me. A warm, a warm Sandy Palm Springs welcome. Thank Are you. you a native? Did you grow up here? Where did you grow up? Uh, I'm pretty darn close to a native. I uh, grew up in, in central Illinois, but I came here in 1985. So <gasps> that's like... Um, that at the covered the, wagon days? When was in that? The, in, the, in the covered wagon days, yeah. <laughs> we, we walked most of the way. So I, I got here when I was 20, and I'm 55 now. So I've lived here longer than there. I mean, I still call that home, but uh -huh. Palm Springs is... Uh, I'm, 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 I'm definitely a local. You're definitely alone. And yeah, what made you yeah. move here? What inspired you to move? Um, great question. Uh, well, if you've ever been to the Midwest, a lot of the, it's kind of the weather is, is it's very gray and gloomy for much of the year. And um, I just always yearn for the West and California and the sunshine. And I had a, a friend that had, a best friend who had moved out here and was always calling me, telling me how great it was. And so, you know, one morning a, a knock was on his door and there I was. <laughs> and, uh, you know, yeah just like you just, that you just packed everything up did you drive across and just yeah, like a, a friend and I drove across in a day and a half through ice and sleet and then when we got here it was January 31st 1985 and Feb uh, the following day I guess that was February 1st it snowed in Palm Springs and people were just like oh my god snow and we had just left like ice and snow and I'm like I don't need to go outside and see snow I, I know what snow looks like <laughs> this is not we, yeah. snow <laughs> <laughs> so what made you decide to be an artist Patrick out of all the things you could have been on this work how um, could you well, become a neurosurgeon yeah uh well right you know I always wanted to be a politician and a lawyer oh okay um, that was I was a big into student council and student government and always followed politics and but um, I'm, le I'm left-handed, and so I'm always really kind of attribute a lot of my creativity to being right-brained. Mm -hmm. And so I was always, uh, my teachers were always catching me doodling and drawing, and um, I always had my head in art books, and I was thinking this morning about our interview. My, my grandmother had this giant Norman Rockwell book. It's about a two-foot book, and every time I'd go to her house, that would be the first thing I would look at. And Norman Rockwell, who I think is one of our most uh, greatest American illustrators and artists, who's kind of underrated as his, mm -hmm. um, uh, on his skill level, because he's kind of considered an illustrator. This, this book just showed me of like, um, you know, the power of art to kind of convey a message. And although I'm not an illustrator, I'm an abstract painter, mm -hmm. um, I just always have been interested in art and just, um, you know, I, what really, uh, kind of fired me up initially was a trip to the Chicago Art Museum when I was in junior college and I, it was a, a particular painting, an abstract painting mm -hmm. that kind of was like that aha moment for me. It was by an abstract painter named Willem de Kooning, who's pretty famous. And it was one of his huge pieces. It was this whole, it was in this kind of gallery by itself in the Chicago Art Museum. It was one of those, one of those moments where I turned the corner and I was the only one there and I was like sucked into this painting. And it's this crazy abs, kind of similar to something that's behind me. And it just, 
it just talked to me. It talked to me. And at that point, I'm like, I'm going to be a painter. And so I just have spent the next 30 years, you know, 20 years, like copying and, you know, developing my own style, which has morphed into uh, our nonprofit and working with kids and, you know, being a father has, has uh, and having artistic kids has certainly helped. So, you know, I was kind of, I was kind of born to it. And so um, that's, that's what I do. My head's always in art. I love museums and studying artists and learning about their, their career and their struggles. And uh, to me, that's what makes the world go around is art. And tell me more about your bench. Like, what inspired you? How was the process? Like, uh, how did you go about applying to do the bench? How did you go about uh, conceptualizing how you were going to execute the bench? Uh, did you paint the bench, or did you have Patella Art also paint the bench? I have more questions for you, so cool. I'm just keep on asking them. Yeah, so yeah. So, <laughs> sure. So, the, so the bench project. Um, I mean. I, having been in town for so long, I've seen, uh, you know, we, Palm Springs has repainted those benches five different times and it's always really great to see new life come into them. Um, for, for our bench, and, and I, uh, I painted it along with my daughter, my eldest daughter, Maddie uh, Sheehan, who's really the first Coachella art kid. Um, she was there in, in the early days. Uh, we kind of brainstormed a concept of just something fun and pop pop and colorful and um i do a lot of geometric stuff so doing circles if you uh, um, when folks see the bench it's basically a couple different uh, two-tone colors purple and a cream colored with all these different colored uh circles and so circles are fun because they're just you know, just fun to make and um uh, i had to come up with how i was going to paint these perfect circles and so i actually found I went to the, I love finding my art supplies at Home Depot. And so I went to the plumbing department and found these little PVC rings for different plumbing fittings of different sizes. And that's how we kind of uh, painted them. I, I did a practice mural on my house with some circles earlier uh, in when the pandemic start, first started. Um, we did a pool mural by our pool. And so we did a, a bunch of circles on this wall. So we had some experience, but I, but I learned I kind of learned how to do that. And then I had, uh, my daughter was, she's very meticulous on, her, her circles were way better than mine. <laughs> so she would come and clean up my circles, but it was just meant to be Palm Springsy, fun, pop of color. There's some cool purples and blues and whites and just, just a lot of fun colors. And so I think it turned out pretty good. It really did. Yeah. It's such a fun, fabulous bench. And when you're walking downtown, it just stops you in your tracks yeah. and you're like, Ooh, it almost looked like candy. It's so it, yeah. fun. I had somebody walk by. There was, you know, what was great was all the public comments. You know, I didn't realize um, early morning on Palm Canyon, a lot of people walked the street, a lot of locals with their dogs. Everyone was wearing masks. Um, but a lot of, uh, in the morning, it's all locals. And then as you get into the afternoon, the, the tourists kind of come out. And so it was so fun to see people stopping and making comments. It looks like an ice cream sandwich. It looks like a big lollipop, uh, looks like a polka dot shirt I own, um, looks like wallpaper, you know, it was all, it was all positive stuff. What are you doing? Um, and uh, many people were very uh, interested, but also, you know, loved all the other benches and were um, super supportive of Main Street and the Arts Commission for doing these projects. Because, you know, we need to keep arts alive always, but especially now, um, you know, public art is the is the great social distancing art practice. We can we can social distance, and we can get kids to come in and help and paint murals and benches and trash cans. And I know that's what we're all working towards this goal of continuing to beautify our our, our beautiful city. And how was it working with your daughter on that project for her to go from? Uh, and also tell us a little bit more about Coachella Arts and how that project came about. Sure. Um, so. Uh, 20 years ago when, well, I guess maybe 15 years ago when my, my daughter Maddie was in grades, was in primary school at Catherine Finchie Elementary, which is a, a, um, a grade school near uh, Desert Hospital. I worked for a nonprofit where we brought arts, music, and performing arts and, and uh, theater arts to the kids as an after-school nonprofit. 
So I was one of the instructors when she was at that school. So I got to pick what school I wanted to work in. And obviously I picked that one and she was one of my students. So we would, we were like traveling gypsies. We would bring our art supplies in and we'd have a 40 or 50 kids after school that would um, do an art lesson. And it was a very structured program. It just wasn't coloring. It was um, today we're going to learn about Pablo Picasso and we might do a still life or a, a self-portrait and the kids would get to interact with each other. And so, um, so I was involved early on in this, in the arts nonprofit and at, we grew that organization to where we were serving 1200 kids a week oh, wow. in Palm Springs Unified and Desert Sands Unified schools. So we went to like 16 different schools. We taught violin, uh, Shakespeare, art, dance. I mean, it was really cool experience and then, and then I kind of jumped into part-time office manager for that organization then the founder of that organization decided to move and she kind of closed up the shop and and really not all I mean there are other arts nonprofits that serve the local school districts but um, uh, I, I I was then worked in a couple opened a gallery worked in some art galleries on El Paseo and Palm Desert I've always been involved in the arts and then Last summer, I decided to leave the private sector and kind of go back to the arts and um, just to start, I wanted to start my own nonprofit, which is CoachellaArt.org, mm -hmm. if you want to go to the website. Uh, and it was really, it's really a nonprofit dedicated to promoting, teaching, and providing resources to elementary and middle school and, and high school students in the Coachella Valley. So. We do murals. I buy art supplies for an entire class. So I raise money to buy art supplies for an entire classroom. Um, musical instruments. My, my youngest daughter, Bella, is a musician. and She's in the school band at Raymond Cree Middle School in Palm Springs. And so often there are uh, kids who cannot afford to, do, to purchase their instrument. So they get on this rental program and it's not really, it's very expensive. It's almost twice the cost of an instrument. Mm -hmm. So I'll work with the band instructor to say, hey, are there a couple students who are really showing, you know, musical promise mm -hmm. that their families are struggling to afford the tuba or the trumpet or the, right. uh, the violin. And then so we'll identify uh, one or two students and then I'll go fundraise for that and just outright purchase that instrument for that family because it's just you know it's a burden so some of it's like 25 bucks a month for a two-year commitment and that's you know some folks right now especially with covid um can you know can't afford that so um we, we kind of come in as angels and try to help where we can so very very small very grassroots uh no employees yet just me and a, and a great group of volunteers that help with uh with our projects and have you completed any um, other projects, uh, Coachella Arts in the Valley? Can oh, Where can people find and go look at those? Uh, well, right now, um, so I'm in the middle of two murals at Raymond Cree Elementary. We were had just started two of the murals. And uh, then on March 13th, I was asked, I was asked to leave uh, because of the coronavirus and then schools were closed. So actually I'm going back after we finish today, I'm going to put my paint gear on and go back. And I've been, um, the, the, there's a lot of maintenance happening at the school right now. So the principal's been working behind the scenes to get me back on, uh, on the job. So I've got some murals to finish. And at that point, um, I guess when school, when kids are allowed to go back mm -hmm. to school and visitors are allowed to go back, there's a whole mural wall at the school uh, with about six different murals and then will be number seven and eight. So, um, and then the, the bench, and then I've done some other murals just when I was artist in residence with the um, Palm Springs Public Arts Commission. So when I was on in, in your chair as an arts commissioner, we did a lot of outreach to the school district because it was right around 2006, seven, eight, nine, when we didn't have a lot of funding and we had to do kind of these art outreach programs to local schools. So we did some sculpture projects. I did two or three murals. Um, so yeah, the, um, 
that's the plan. We're, we're, we're also working on a, a big unity campaign um, with uh, other, um, we're all about joining forces. So um, partnering with other local nonprofits to do mural, ca mural campaigns throughout the Valley with this unity concept, mm -hmm. which I think is really cool um, because we need unity. We always need unity, but we really need it now more than ever. And that's, that's part of, you know, that's part of what we teach is not just how to make art, but why, why make art? You know, a, a lot of, most young people have not been exposed to, um, you know, what is the motivation behind art? How do you express yourself through art making? You know, for me, it's all about the process. Often, most of my joy just as a studio artist is the making of it. After the, the piece is complete, I'm kind of done, right? Um, but, um, you know, and getting young people to kind of open up and talk about uh, how they see the world through art is, is the bigger challenge because um, to me, the downside of social media and us being tuned into our devices is that we've kind of lost the art of conversation and especially getting a young 10, 12, 13 year old boy to talk about feelings. What kind of art do they like? I mean, the, the answer is, usually the answer is, I don't know. Um, and how do they see art through the lens of what's going on through COVID, through uh, a divided country, through Black Lives Matter? through what's their home life look like? Is there substance abuse at home? Do they have relatives that are in trouble? Are they connected to their parents? Uh, what, what's their relationship with their sibling like? All that, you know, art can be a really great um, starter to get people talking about that. What do you like? Well, I like portraits. Well, have you ever tried to do a self-portrait? Do you know what, what artists, what are the famous artists that do self-portraits? Well, I don't know. I'm mean, just exposing them to the arts. I mean, many kids uh, have never opened a, an art book because, because they, they go to a school district and it's not just Palm Springs or Down Valley that has taken the arts away. You know, we're all about teaching to the test and many kids learn. I mean, I know I'm a visual learner. I've got to see it and I've got to do it for me for it to really resonate with me as opposed to try to reading it out of a book so for me it's all about um, getting kids exposed to the arts and we you know we made the next Basquiat or Picasso or uh, George O'Keefe is is there uh, but it's just you know if we don't tap into that early on yeah we're gonna leave. you know we might there might be the, the great artist that we never we never get to experience so getting wow. it's about putting those tools in their hands and some kids have never really worked on a large scale mural and held a paint roller and learned learned how to do it so that's what that's what we're about i probably talk i was probably a long-winded answer <laughs> no that's perfect that's exactly what we want to hear cool. we want to know the full trajectory of it because sometimes people lose the concept that all these things that happen in our environment it also influence our art our choices it influences a lot so art is really important for healing and um, having a outlet for your psyche to play in. And that was one of the things that we definitely want to do with uh, public art. So if you have like a motto, an artistic motto to live by, or some great words of inspiration, what would they be? Um, well, you know, I've done a lot of, um, I, I love to talk about art, so I get asked to talk about art, and uh, invariably it will be maybe a demonstration. So I've done art demonstrations at Palm Springs Art Museum and at the at school districts, and um, and, and I've always made it interactive. Invariably, somebody will say, "Well, I don't have an artistic bone in my body. You know, I can't draw a straight line." I'm like, "Well, look at the painting behind me. Either can I, right?" <laughs> um, that it, you know it starting get started get get some paint on your hands get some clay under your nails get some pen david hockney says uh make art the reason try to paint every day do something artistic every day it's a muscle we are all artists we all have a creative brain 
we choose to stifle that. If you let that out and just, and don't be such a critic, you know, of course your first painting is not going to be your best painting. But I know I have, some, or I have some early stuff that I did that I pull out and I'm like, I don't even remember doing that, but that's pretty cool. So I, I, my motto would be art matters and, you know, get your hands dirty. It's get, get into the process because it's cathartic. It's like, for me, I love to garden too. I love to grow desert plants. And um, doing that takes me away from my problems. I clear my head. It's very meditative. So whatever the art form is, if you and it's not expensive to, to be an artist. You can start out with cheap watercolors and some good paper or a little acrylic paint set and start by copying. Find something you like and try to copy it on a small scale. You don't have to start out with a 10 foot canvas. You can work small. Um, art supplies are super cheap um, and just get started and you'd be surprised where it takes you and just, just don't, be, don't be a critic. You know, be a art, make it art, art, making art is the art. Yay! Yay. Well, on that note, we're definitely going to go out and create some art today. Thank you so much, Patrick. Sure. For this wonderful interview. We've learned so much about you and Coachella Arts. If you're downtown, please go by the Tinderbox, Google it. If this, his bench is right in front and let us know what you think. Does it look like a piece of candy? Does it look like, you know, ice cream? Does it, what does it look <laughs> like to you? Please yeah. give us a shout out and tell us. Thank you so much. And always go out there, make art, make, make art it. people. Go make art today. Thanks again. Bye. My pleasure. Thank you all.